right, so hello everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Two Little Feet Podcast. Uh, my name is Terrence Greer. Joined today by my co-host Francesca Pena. Hey y'all. Hey. And today we have on the incredible Mr. Ian Orr. How you doing today, sir? Doing well. Yeah, hey, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess we, we know you from um, seeing you out dancing, man. I said going to fed with Tian and Peter. Yeah, bro, you have uh, you're very good, bro. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously, that's why we had to have you on the show, man. Um, so I, I thought, I, I didn't really know this, but I thought, um, I guess you were dancing kind of like Brazilian Zoo, but I guess it's actually more so M Zoo. Is that your specialty? Uh, if you see me out dancing at a place that's playing that kind of music, the thing that's probably the base technique of what I'm doing is going to be M Zoo. Okay. And M Zook is of a similar lineage as what's referred to as Brazilian Zook or Zook Tradicional. Mm-hmm. But there's uh, the, the family tree breaks slightly, okay. slightly above there. So yeah, M Zook's from like Spain, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay, so. Oh, um, maybe not. I, I could be mistaken. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, you're not mistaken. It's just like uh, there's, there's multiple facets to the okay. story. So you have Lombada. Right. Which was this very small, cultural, small town thing. And um, you had these Europeans, a particular European, who came across this little cultural dance. Everybody would get dressed up and do this really sensual dance together. And um, he saw it, and he saw that it was really marketable. He saw it was something that people would really be into. And so he made a Lombada band and called it Kaoma. And he started to promote this idea of Lombada everywhere. And Lombada was already in, like, Rio and stuff like that, but the style that was in Rio was a lot more similar to maybe what you would think of uh, an onto salsa looking like no. really? instead of what you think of, like, your traditional Lombada to look mm-hmm. like. So you mean, I guess, kind of linear, or would you... It was, so yeah, it, was, it didn't have the complete circularity like the Lombada mm. in... Um, in Porto Seguro had, excuse me, but um, it had a lot more counter pressure than you see in uh, in salsa. Usually salsa, the energy is kept very inward. Right, right, right. But uh, this was a style in Rio of Lombada where you saw very outward energy and you would use that centrifugal force to really make the dance move, and that's where you harnessed it. But the version that this guy got a hold of was what he saw in um, in Porto Seguro, which was like a little thing. And that's where he got all the girls wearing short skirts with thongs and all the okay, guys with yeah, no shirts on. Because that was a little costume you'd wear when you'd go dancing. Mm-hmm. And he spread it and he started his band. And uh, his band, Kaoma, did the song. The da, na, 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 da, na, 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 it's like the classic Lombada song. Then J-Lo did a remix of it where she sampled it. But that's Kaoma's Lombada. And that song is like the Lombada song. And it came out all over the world. And it became really, really famous. And they even made movies. They made a Lombada movie. And then they made a Lombada 2 movie. Oh. Man, if you're ever like, you're like, I want to lose an hour and a half to my life to, to just waste. Check out Lombada. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, and you highly recommend it. So bad. Oh. So bad. <laughs> why do you say it's bad? <laughs> I mean, that's like, I don't know. Like, why do you say the movie's bad? It's a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's poorly made. It's so bad. But, like, great. It existed. Is it a documentary? Like, what no, is it? no. It's like a drama. Okay. Yeah, it's like a Lombada based drama. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like, like, I don't know. Maybe see it. I don't know what your life is. <laughs> I wouldn't watch it again. <laughs> you put that on right now. Not guys. Like, no, I'm not I appreciate it. the <laughs> morning, bro. I keep that in mind. But, um, yeah, so they made movies and it's huge. But then, like, I guess what happened <laughs> was um, it got too big for its britches and people got sick of it. it got was, sick of what? It was Lombada. Oh. This whole culture of Lombada because, like, it was really flashy and you had it was called, like, the Forbidden Dance. And I, I've heard that. The yeah, church yeah, was yeah. like, you shouldn't dance Lombada. And they were feeding into this image and it was, like, sequins and just all this and then people were just like, all right, it's, that's enough of this, okay? That was fun. We're done with it. Mm. And the musicians stopped making Lombada music. And all the clubs that had opened up everywhere for Lombada, because it was so big, especially all over Rio, closed down. Damn. Because people just weren't feeling it anymore. I guess, yeah. And um, kind of right when this happened, you had 
these pirate radio groups from Brazil, mm. and they were picking up music from the Caribbean. Exactly. That's why they're picking up zook music, yeah, right? Zook music. Yeah. And they also had the ships that would carry the liquor between the islands and Brazil illegally. And they would also take records. Mm. They have a lot of zook mm. albums. Okay. Bring with them, and that's how the music. So this music's coming into the clubs right while all the Lombada clubs are closing. So all the Lombada dancers start going to these clubs playing zook. And they start dancing the Lombada to Zook music. Exactly. That's what it is. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So I, I've, people get upset, man, when you say, um, like, you're dancing Zook. Because when you're dancing Brazilian Zook and just labeling it as Zook. Because Zook is more so Caribbean music, right? Oh, in terms of, well, no. So the dance, there's like actually. You're a dancing thing. Lombada music to, or Lombada to Zook music. No, there's actually a dance considered Zook traditional, okay. Brazilian Zook. That's its own dance. Brazilian Zook, right? Yeah, You're so right, there right. was actually a council. There's like a council of Zook dancers, which is really funny. But they have like their own like little political group. And they tried to have a vote to propose that the name of the dance get officially changed to from what? Brazilian Zook to just Zook. And they tried to pass this whole measure, and then they're like, See, there was a zoo dance before. Well, kind of. It wasn't really before or after. You have the dance that's happening in Guadalupe when the music is going on, which is just like a merengue. No, Because Zook is just like all these different islands had their merengues. Uh Uh-huh. Because a merengue is just a traditional, like any kind of like... two-step. Where you have that feeling that leads you to a two-step, different rhythms, different islands. The one that happened to be the merengue of Guadalupe was zoo. Okay. That's the rhythm that it came out of. And so, yeah, like if you just think of what people just so happen to be dancing to that music being on on those islands, of course, it's just like a two-step, mm-hmm. feel it with your partner. But I think, you know, the place where people would maybe get upset is in that that wasn't really a formalized thing. Like that was people feeling the music and grooving to it, and that's awesome. Uh-huh. But like I feel music and groove to it all the time, but that doesn't mean that I get to label it my dance. Okay, right, right, right. You know, so it was actually the next step where people took a dance and formalized it to that music that made Brazilian zoo. Right. Okay. And like you have a story where one particular partnership says, "Oh, well, we did it." And everybody came to us, and we taught the world Brazilian zook. That's not true. Okay. The truth is, is it was a whole city of people who used to be dancing zook, and you have a lot of really creative people, and they're going out, and they're dancing together, and they're adapting. I'm sorry, used to be dancing lambada, and they're adapting their style to work with this new music. Of course, it's not like two people right, like, right, 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 sat exactly. down and had uh-huh. a vision in the burning bush. Sure enough. Like they were just dancing. But what's funny is at the same time, you've got this really um, – great known dancer in Rio who's a Lombada dancer who's just like in Lombada he's like you watch old videos of Lombada and it's just like fun and they're going he was one of those like old timers and he was also a capoeira master uh, who is this and uh, he moved to Spain to Mallorca before the transformation happened between Lombada and Zou okay. like, kind of right during it Oh, yeah, like right during it when it really was happening. And he got to Mallorca, Spain as a performer. He was going to dance there as a performer. And these club owners, there was a little club called Made in Brazil in Mallorca, Spain. And they were like, you know, if you want to, if you don't want to go back to Brazil, you can stay here with us in Mallorca and we'll give you a job here. You can be our dance teacher. Nice. And you can teach classes, and you can work as a performer here at our club, and you can stay in Mallorca. And he stayed. And uh, that was over 20 years ago. Well, who was this individual? So, okay, all right. this like, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, continue. Um, <laughs> as he continued, he continued to dance Lombada as the music was changing to Zouk, but he wasn't there in Rio when all those people were working together and making their version. He was alone in okay. Spain with this very unique mind for looking at things and creating unexpected solutions. Okay. Um, and now to this, where he is now is he has achieved what I know to be the dream of his life. Are you talking about yourself? This is Mestre JJ. Oh, okay. That's Jefferson Costa de Oliveira, <laughs> who's um, 
a master of capoeira, and he has his own school of capoeira and dance mm. in Mallorca, Spain. And he created his own style of zouk in Mallorca. So it was Mallorcan zouk. Is that what it is? So it's M zouk. Okay. Mm. So he comes from the roots of Rio de Janeiro style lambada, not yeah. Porto Seguro style lambada. And he brings that lambada to Spain and he has to teach it to Europeans instead of to Brazilians. So he has to have, you know, Europeans, they always want to ask why. You know, they don't just want to be like, okay, I feel it, I get it, I'm in it. They always need to know why. They have to ask the question all the time. And so he has to think about the dance in a totally it's different, different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to have these systems and these techniques that are Better really, guys, right? really specific. And um, so that's how he creates Mzook. And everything in Mzook is built just like any very basic system that you've ever worked in. You've got a few fundamental rules that you start with, and then you stack on them little mm. by little. And everything, you can always check to the rule before it to make sense of why the next thing's happening. Okay. So you build this little structure that way. And then once you really have command of the structure, you use kind of play it with as right just a, a medium for expression. Right, right, you right. You forget about the structure. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, and yeah. now it's just trained muscle memory exactly. to give you... So you're not always second guessing yourself. Mm-hmm. You that's that's like any dance. Up. I get you. Yeah, yeah. You learn the basics. Mm-hmm. And right. Sure enough, I understand that. Exactly. And so and so he's um, yeah, he's teaching Imzu, you know, and everything. How does it uh, you know how it expands? Like yeah, it just gets popular. Like, is YouTube is it YouTube or what? What happened? No, it's before YouTube. So he took on two young students. He took, he had six original students, and two of them were this brother and sister, I think maybe 10 and 13, from Mallorca, named Daniel and Leticia Estevez Lopez. Maybe they had another, I don't know if it's supposed to be Estevez Lopez or just yeah, Lopez no. or they just had, Estevez. They had like two it's all in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they are really the pupils of his from that first set of students that stand out and they really devote themselves to it. And from such a young age, mm. they're training as Zouk dancers. They're not training as ballet dancers who also do Zouk. They're not training as, you know, people who are coming into Zouk. They are from a young age trained fundamentally in Zouk. Uh. And so they're like true Zouk dancers. So real quick, um, they're training as Lombada dancers? Or, or is that a safe to say? I'm just like, curious. So that's what's funny is he doesn't even know that the word has changed uh, in the beginning. Okay. He's just doing his dance to Zouk right, music. Right, okay. And then when he goes back to Brazil, they're like, that's not Lombada that you're dancing anymore. And he's like, okay, I don't know. I've just been dancing. And they're like, yeah, it's more, it's, um, you have to call it something else. And so mm-hmm. that's when Zouk Lombada became more of a word. Okay, okay, okay. It was kind of the need to identify because it was too far from Lombada to call it Lombada anymore. Mm. The, the evolution of a dance then, right? Sure, you have wherever that moment is. It's like, you know, you look at yourself in the mirror every day. You don't see that you look it's any small different. Changes. But you see somebody a year later. Sure enough. Yeah. I get you. So somebody saw him a few years later, and they were like, that's <laughs> real different. <laughs> <laughs> I get you, I get you. Yeah. So he's training up um, the two children? I forgot. His. Right, he's got the six students. Daniel and Leticia are two of them, their kids. They're going all at it. And he also, he's a capoeira mestre, so they're working in capoeira too. And um, as they grow, he kind of passes the mantle to the two of them to carry on Emzu past him. Because he's, he's got his... His life, like right. he's in such a good place. He's got his school. He's got his two sons. Like he's in Mallorca, and he's perfect there. You know? Like he's like he's amazing, and he could always travel and do amazing things. And I think he still has some traveling. But at that point in his life, I think he was happy to to be at his school and let other people travel. And um, so Daniel and Leticia are the ones who really started to bring the style of dance out to the congresses, Mm. out to the existing Zouk events. And this was a long time ago. This is before uh, Zouk was big. Could you give a year to it? Like, what would you mean? 90s? Mid-90s. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, well, let me see. Mid-90s, what are we? It's 2009. Yeah. No, we have to be talking the late 90s, early 2000s 2000s that they really got going. It has to be then. Okay. 
So yeah, we're talking late '90s, early 2000s. Hmm. And um, the funny thing is, is like they're the first international teachers who are really getting recognition who aren't from Brazil. Oh. And so they're having to deal with a lot of pushback from that because there's this Brazilian sense of like ownership a, of the uh, dance. Oh, and yeah, like, right. What are you doing teaching our dance? Like, mm. You haven't even come and trained with us in Brazil. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the way they got respect was they just went and danced harder than everybody yeah, else, yeah, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. like, eventually the community was like, all right, you know what? You're, you're part of it. Like, you're in. And... Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm sure. I'm sure parts of the community. Of course, still, still said that. that.